So thank you for the invitation. Um, I'm here to, to talk about some of the stuff we do over at Aspitar. I'm a physiotherapist from Denmark and been working in Aspitar for the last three years, uh, working on my PhD on uh, acute groin injuries. So this is part of what I'm doing uh, and this is what we're going to talk about. Um, no uh, conflict of interest. All right. So part of the study is looking at the initial examination and looking at the diagnosis of these players coming in with the acute groin injuries here. And thanks to all of you guys in the NSMP, we're able to get these guys in very quickly. So within seven days of injury, they get a clinical examination, they get imaging as well. So we're able to get an over overview of these injuries uh, that happen here in Qatar. And from the first overview, we had 84 uh, adult football players, and we can see when we asked them, how do these injuries occur? And this is what I'm going to talk about today. So the majority of these groin injuries in football occur during kicking when we're talking to the players. And, and if we look at where these injuries are, we can see that they follow the normal distribution of, of groin injuries in football. Uh, so the majority are in the adductors. So for this talk today, I'm just going to focus on kicking injuries and adductor injuries. Um, so, we're doing a sub-study and looking at the videos that we're getting from the QSL. So we want to know, okay, what do we know about injury mechanism? Has it been done before? Do we have anything to go to? Um, there's one study who did a retrospective review of one season in Norwegian football and they found 121 injuries, acute injuries, registered. But when they went through all of these videos, they weren't able to detect any of these uh, acute groin injuries. So the retrospective review is really difficult because these injuries are not always apparent and sometimes these players just play on even though they had an injury. So this is what sets uh, this uh, sub-study apart. Because what happened was um, we, we were able to get immediate access to this footage. And as the players come into the consultation, we're able to ask them which game did the injury happen, what minute I was able to get the video footage. And I was able to sit down with the player looking through the video footage and actually trying to identify the exact moment of the pain. Uh, and because it was such a short time after the injury, all the players were actually able to say, this is the situation where I felt the pain. Um, and even 13 players were able to say, when my leg was in this position, that's when the pain started. So we get some unique information by doing this. Uh, and from this sub-study, we had 17 acute adductor longus injuries. So one muscle in, in the groin area, and this is what I'm going to focus on today. Uh, so what we did is, we, we, we were a group of, of researchers and we made a big scoring sheet looking at all these different elements that we thought were uh, relevant for the injury. So we looked at the playing situation, the player and opponent behavior, and we're trying to estimate some of the joint positions. And then afterwards, we, went, we came together and had a consensus meeting. So can we actually see these things on the video? And can we agree on, and, and, and there's something that we can't see, and, and, and then we excluded some items. So I'll focus on, on what we're able to agree on. But if we first look at the, the playing situation, so, so where did these injuries happen? There weren't really anything particular in that. It was all around the pitch. It was offensive. It was defensive actions. It was goalkeepers. It was midfielders, strikers. So all around the pitch, all types of players. But what we see is that only two of these uh, injuries happened during set play. So usually these injuries happen in some form of action during the game. And getting a little bit more into that, we can see that often the players who get the injuries are in speed. So they're doing some form of action while they're running, while they're sprinting. But I'll get back to that. And often they have an opponent within close range. So they have to react uh, and be aware of the situation, which might influence how they move. Uh, but we can see that from all of these injuries we had, there was no foul play, no direct contact. So rule changes are probably not likely. It's more related to, to the player himself. Um, but often, this player had to react to some form of event. The ball just went a meter further than he thought, or there was something else going on that he had to react to. Uh, and, and, and often, it looked like they were out of balance. So if we look at all of these uh, injuries that we, we had in this study, 
we can see that in, in, in a rough categories, we, can, we could divide them into four different types. So some happen in change of direction, some happen in kicking, some happen when you're reaching for the ball. So let's say you have your right leg in the back going for the ball with the left leg stretching back and you're getting the, the adductor longus injury like that. And jumping as well, so moving up and getting, uh, getting a fast contraction there. But there was a big variation in these types. Dif different types of change of direction, different situations, different speeds. Same with kicking, short passes, long passes. So it's not specific particular situations that will put you at risk, which makes it a little bit more complicated. Um, well, groin injuries are generally a, a bit complicated. And, um, but for now here, focus on kicking, so I'll go on with that. So if we just look at the normal kick, if we look at the maximal instep uh, kick, which is usually the most common kick, and we'll look at the biomechanics uh, and look at specifically the adductor longus, there are different phases that the kick can be divided into. So we get to the preparation phase, and you can see the graph here depicts the rate of the stretch. So how fast is the muscle stretching? And we can see when you get to the back swing, where you have the hip all the way almost in the peak hip extension, the fastest rate of stretch uh, is apparent um, before you get down to a more concentric movement uh, and, 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 and hit the ball in the end. Um, and at, these, uh, at this moment is also where you have uh, the, the highest velocity and, and the highest EMG in the muscle, so highest muscle activity. So what's considered some round, somewhere around the backswing uh, and the leg cocking phase of the kick, this is where you'll get the injury. Um, and this is, is theoretically said that, all right, this is because the muscle is working essentially, it's in a stretch position, there are high forces, uh, and a high velocity. But we have these kicks, you know, thousands of times throughout a season. So why do these players get injured in this specific kick? Is, are these kicks then really, really different or do they look like it and then, then what could be the reason? So I'm going to give you uh, a, a three different videos here. One of these guys gets an injury. So three goalkeepers doing a maximal instep kick. We're only looking till the first part of the follow through and have a guess in your mind which one is getting the injury. Is it really that obvious? If we go through the faces of the kick, um, there are different ways of defining that. Um, but if we look at uh, our theoretical model of when uh, the injury happened. I have a still, bill for, uh, still picture for you. So, uh, so you can see if you get a little bit closer here. Can you see now? For me, it's very, very different if I'm looking, uh, difficult if I'm looking only at these pictures. All right, I'll give you the answer here. الإصابة صالح اللهياب يعني هم الوكرة ما محتاجين أن يصاب لهم حارس يكفي اللي بيهم و... We saw that this injury could happen it has all the, 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 the situation and the movement has all the components that we described before in our kick but what happens then when the player says I felt the pain when I hit the ball and this is not uncommon in the maximal uh, kicking injuries so then we have to look at the ball impact. What happens in ball impact? Unfortunately, there's not a lot of research on this. So if you're looking at the same study from before, you can see the, 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 part, the early part of the swing phase. This is where you reach your, your peak EMG for your adductor longus. But when you hit the ball, these guys weren't able to, uh, to, to, to see the, the EMG measures in, in a uh, in a sufficient way to be able to say anything about that and similar to other studies. So is it the actual ball impact that causes the injury or does the injury happen before and you, um, and you get an exacerbation of the pain when you hit the ball? For, the ball impact itself is a very short um, period of time, so only 8 to 9 milliseconds, which also makes it really difficult. Um, but we can see that there are big, big forces involved so the peak reaction force of the ball is up to 3,000 Newton. 
which is much larger than any other part uh, of the kick. And this happens in a very short duration of time. So my point is if when you're looking at the maximal kicking, we should consider uh, the ball impact as a possible risk factor. And that, uh, that could also influence uh, our, our training uh, in terms of prevention. But I'll give you another video where it's not the ball impact. So the player here says uh, that he's getting the injury. <laughs> Categorized as a kicking injury, but it's a short pass. You don't have these high forces involved. We go on to the next one. We'll get a little bit closer. And we can see what movement happens. Get the video. هذه المباراة وبالتالي الإصابات تتوالى ونتمنى أن لا تؤثر هذه. It's a little bit behind him. He has to stretch back and kick the ball. Gets an injury. So very, very minor situation, I would say, compared to the maximal kick. But if we look at the injuries. So one of these guys has a, has a grade one injury of the adductor longus and, one of the, and the other guy has a complete adductor longus avulsion. And as you could probably hear from, from my voice, that is the blue guy with the biggest injury. So the point of this is that the, the, the situation doesn't have to be so violently looking uh, and, and doesn't have to involve so high forces apparently uh, but can create, cause uh, big injuries. So could this be related to prior load? Uh, we think so. Eh? So we know from, from the overall workload ratio, if you, if you take the last week's training compared to the average of the, the, the last four weeks, you can see that you're, uh, if you have a ratio, uh, a higher ratio, you're likely to have a higher risk of injury. Uh, so changes in workload might matter. So, so one of these points is the, this is based on running load. But is anybody working in clubs actually considering kicking load? How many kicks do we have in this exercise? How hard are we kicking in these exercises? When we look at these maximal kicking, we're reaching um, EMG measures of up to 81%, which is similar to a strength training exercise. And, and any physio I know would, would always know how many repetitions they're actually providing for the players. So, uh, we also know that after a, a, just a short number or a few number of, of kicks, there's a significant reduction in ball velocity and, and, and thigh angular movement. So just a, a small amount of kick will actually reduce or increase the fatigue. And you can consider if you have a training session with a lot more, that, uh, more kicks, that this will also influence your injury risk. Um, so point it, 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 it happens often in, in innocuous situations. So here are, are some pictures from different, uh, different types of injuries, so the, 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 the four different categories on top. We have different kicking situations in the middle, uh, some change of direction situation. On bottom left, we have, um, we have the reaching situations. So what, is there anything overall that we can say, what situations do they actually happen in, or what are the movements involved in these injuries? So if we look at the injured side and the hip, we can see that the, when, when the player says he gets an injury at the moment of pain, he's often in hip extension, he's in abduction and, uh, and external rotation, and often in, with a posterior pelvis orientation. So he has his pelvis uh, in, in the back, and then he's making the kick, and that could be the reaching injury, it could be a change of direction injury, uh, and it could be a kicking injury. So similar movements for the different injuries, uh, injury categories. And are we considering that in our training? And are we using this hip flexion and, and, and adduction moment? Um, usually not so much. Huh? So if we look at the adductor exercises that we usually prescribe, it's usually only uh, pure adduction. Uh, but maybe we should consider including uh, a hip flexion uh, movement in uh, our um, prevention. But we know from, from other muscle injuries that it might not be that important as long as we, uh, we reach uh, sufficient loading uh, in an outer range position. For instance, uh, the Nordic hamstring exercise that we, we, we talked about earlier. So to finish up here, this is what we, we saw from, from these videos. 
there, there's a large variation often in speed with the opponent near and, and, and the player has to do a, f a fast reaction. So we should be considering prior load because often these injuries don't happen in, 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 in major situations and the movement uh, involved as I talked before. Just want to finish off thanking uh, the team of analysts for, for their de discussions and especially the Aspire IPTV uh, team who were able to provide all the videos uh, for us which make this study really good. Thank you.